Welcome back everybody. Today we got ourselves a 2009 Toyota Camry uh, with a uh, misfire code on cylinder two. Um, and of course this had the plugs, the, I think coils changed. Um, they even told me something about the harness to all the coils was all breaking and falling apart so they replaced the pigtails uh, but let's just duplicate the concern they said it needed to be drove but um, I don't think so let's look at scan data and we'll see if uh, we can duplicate this here in the shop all right so we got our Cylinder one, two, three, and four uh, live data pids graphing here. So let's just crank the engine over and see if we get some misfires. Already showing some cylinder two misfires. One on well, three, but it's kind of went away now. Let's see what happens if we rev on it just a little bit. nothing there so maybe we do need to drive this but I notice whenever I crank it it sounds a little uh, uh, compression -ish issue let's see in gear this kind of feels like it's stumbling but let's give it some throttle So this fire counter is not really counting a whole lot right now, but I can I can kind of feel it. You can almost hear it. RPM is pretty steady. I don't know it. had a random one on uh, one and four there <clears throat> let's see if we can get it to do that sound again whenever I first crank it to me it sounds like it's got like a compression issue so let all this beeping stop Did you hear that? Did it? Did it? Let's do it again. I'm not sure if I can really can't trust these misfire counters right now. It seems to be idling smooth right now, but I'm telling you, when it's in gear. It feels like it's got just a very slight misfire to it. Let's um uh, let's hook the scope up and just real quickly grab a um, a relative compression. See uh see if that gives us any kind of clue at all. Cause I'm telling you, just spinning it over, it sounds like it's got a little bit of a, a cadence issue when it's first starting to crank over. All right, so I wanted to do a sync to number one coil. That way I can kind of uh, get a good reference for which cylinders on each compression stroke. Um, and I just quickly looked up a diagram for the injectors because you need to kill the injectors on this car. It does not have a clear flood mode. And as you can see on the screenshot here, my power to my injectors is fed through a injector fuse, but that injector fuse also feeds the four cools. So I can't just pull that fuse out. So what I'm gonna actually do is unplug all of the cools or all the injectors on this thing because the fuel rail is pretty easy to get to. I don't, 
Uh, I have to get a light for you to see down in there. But boy, at the spaghetti mess that's that's under here. They uh, told me they replaced the pigtails, and it definitely had the coils replaced as well. But man, oh man. Um, hopefully, all of this was uh, done correctly, because wow. What a spaghetti mess that is. But let's see, can you see the injectors down here? Uh, not really, let me grab a flashlight. Um, there you go, you can see the green injectors down there. So I'm gonna actually just unplug all four injectors and then I can pin into this on the control signal and uh, get us a, uh, a sink for our battery voltage test. So to go over my scope setup here, I've got channel one is just hooked to battery, positive and negative. Um, we're gonna be using AC coupling to uh, see basically the voltage drop on the battery when the starter is running. <clears throat> channel two is pinned into terminal three from um, the wiring diagram. It says terminal three is a white wire and I just kind of separated the spaghetti out and found the only white wire that goes to this and that is in terminal three. So hopefully that's the correct wire for the ignition control, like the command for this. Um, this is a four wire coil, so it's got a, a power and a ground. This other wire is a, a feedback wire the feedback wire is tied to all four coils, so uh, it was pretty easy to figure out which one is your command. Your powers are all tied together, your uh, grounds are all tied together, and then that feedback circuit is all tied together on the diagram. So you, you basically just find the one oddball wire color out of all of them. <clears throat> so let me get the scope plugged up and uh, I'll show you my settings on the scope for for this car and uh, get us a, a waveform, a relative compression waveform. Okay, so we are gonna be using the Phoenix scope on the Phoenix Smart here. And on channel one, I've got it set to AC coupling and voltage. Um, and then for my voltage scale, I've got it on um, 200 millivolts per division. So each block is 200 millivolts. So that's about a volt on the scale that way and a volt on the scale that way. I may have to adjust this some more. I may have to <clears throat> give me a little more voltage range, but channel two, I need to, um, it's set up as DC voltage but I need to actually adjust the voltage on it. The scale is one volt per division, so one volt. So we only got about eight volts on the screen. I, I don't know if this is a five volt command or not, so we're gonna go down to two volts per division. So from here to there, 14 volts. If we slide this on down a little more, we get about 17 volts on the screen there. So there we go, that's the setup. Um, let's get the key and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it full throttle just to get the throttle blade open. We want as, as much air getting into the cylinders as possible. Um, if this is electric throttle body, it might override this input. I don't know, but either way, we're gonna get a thing. Uh, a good scope pattern here. <clears throat> I'm also set, didn't show, but I'm set at 500 milliseconds. Oop. Stay up here. I'm set at 500 milliseconds. I might change this, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how this first capture goes. Cause like I said, I may have to adjust this voltage a little bit to uh, get it a good, nice pattern on the screen, but Let's uh, spin it over, 
see what happens. Yeah, I need to give myself just a little bit more voltage. But, yeah, I need to give myself just a little bit more voltage. So on, on here, to give us some more voltage, we need to click that. And you see we're at 200 and it automatically scales it down. But I need to run it again just to make sure we get the full waveform in the capture. So same thing, just going to hold the throttle open. And we'll stop that. And we can click zoom up here to uh, take sections out of this. I don't really know how you're supposed to widen this out. Maybe changing it down here. Yep, okay. That's, that's how you do it. So you'd click your time base down here and change your time base to widen that zoom out. Apparently it doesn't let me do more than 100 because I picked 500 scale. Yep, I, I would think you could widen that out more if you wanted to, but Either way, we're looking at our voltage drop. So anytime there's voltage drop, that is compression. And you see right here, we've got our, our number one command. So compression, 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 compression back on number one. And you can see there is a difference from one cylinder to the next cylinder. So this is a cylinder one. I, I think the firing order is one, three, four, two, one. I, I need to clarify that, but I, from my memory, I think that's the firing order for this. So two cylinders two and three actually have low compression relative to cylinders one and four. So I was right in thinking I heard a compression issue so we need to dig into this a little bit more okay so since we know we have a compression issue i want to know does the engine breathe the same across all four cylinders so what i mean by that is is the intake pulls on every cylinder equal so is it breathing in the air the same on every cylinder and then when it compresses, is it just losing the air? So to do that, I'm using my Cody's auto diagnostic pulse sensor. I love this thing. I've had this thing for a few years now and I've just got it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a little port down here on the throttle body. That's a vacuum port. I've just got it put onto that. So we can, uh, now it's just spin the car over and uh, I've added a third channel here to see that intake pull. And I may, I may adjust my voltage, I don't know yet. We'll see. But I'm gonna do the same thing. So this time I'm not gonna press the, the pedal. I want as much vacuum in the uh, intake as possible. So let's give it a good spin. Yeah, I think I'm going to give myself just a little less voltage scale. There we go. We got, we've still got a good capture. I just changed the voltage scale a little bit. I'm going to actually change it on the uh, everything else as well, just so I can see more stuff in, in the screen. Let's move this up out of the way. We'll move this down out of the way. And I do see a discrepancy in the vacuum pulls. Uh, so we're looking at channel three, the purple trace. And 
What you can actually do on this scope, I kind of do like, is we can actually add some some cursors. This is actually going to be a uh, 720. Doesn't really matter, but okay. And let's see, can we move these? Yeah, we can move these. All right. So let's put that there and. Oh no. Let's zoom this in a little bit. I guess when I zoom in, my cursors move. So let's put them back where I want them. So this is now number one's uh, 720 degree rotation. So we've got top dead center, bottom dead center, top dead center, bottom dead center, back to top dead center. And the blue trace is our ignition. So you can also see at the top up here, it kind of lines up perfectly with our compression stroke. So ignition, compression, or peak compression. And that would put this pull right here as the intake pull for um, number one. So that would be number one's intake pull. That would be three, four, and two. And I'm not sure if you can make that out, but there's like a little bit of a M there in three and two, but one and four does not have it. They have it in the top, but not in the bottom. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. I don't know which one's the correct one, but we know two and three have less compression than one and four because we've got that up here in our compression here. So what's, which one's the more accurate one? Is, is one and four correct or are they higher compression than two and three? Well, yeah, that would be a good time to have a WPS or in just some kind of in-cylinder pressure transducer. So I'm gonna add a fourth channel to this thing and we're gonna go in-cylinder on uh, cylinder one and then we'll move over to cylinder two and get a, a comparison between the two. All right, so as I'm sitting here editing this, I, I was really thinking about these intake pulls while they're not even. And the answer to that is crankshaft speed. So on the weaker compression cylinders, that crankshaft speed is actually speeding up. Well, if number two is going on a compression stroke, that would mean that <clears throat> one of the other cylinders like either one or four would be on the intake pull so the crankshaft is actually speeding up on number two compression because it's losing that compression that is making the pull on the intake stronger just due to the crankshaft rotation speed so that's why we're actually seeing these different strengths in the pulls and when I first recorded this, I, I really didn't think about it. But now that I've actually had time to think about these captures, that's the answer. All right, so I've not yet used my WPS on the Phoenix scope yet, but I think it's gonna work fine. Um, there is no way that I know of just yet to do any kind of custom probes so we see it displayed in PSI, but on the back here, come on, focus. You can see that in pressure range one, it is negative 15 to 500 PSI, and one volt is equal to 100 PSI. So we can uh, 
pretty much just set our voltage scale to to know that okay well if one volt is 100 psi we can do a little bit of math and figure out that you know what we're actually seeing pressure wise so let's uh put this thing on here there we go and <clears throat> i've already got my scope set to uh one volt per division move this out of the way so you can see one volt per division and if i don't well that's channel three or we're, we're talking about channel four we're in four now so i don't really know how well it's going to display a capture so i may have to like this is literally the first time i've used my pressure transducer with this so i may have to mess around with some sked uh, settings to get the uh, the capture how i want it but let's just give it a go see what happens okay so we got a, a capture there let's hit the stop button <clears throat> it is a little uh noisy there so and i also don't see any intake exhaust pocket so i might actually have to do some um some work here with the settings to get this to uh capture how i need it to because right now it's a little you see the, the squiggly lines in that? So let me play around with some settings and see uh, if I can get this, how it looks on a Pico scope. Well, I'm, I messed with it a little bit and I, I just, I keep getting this same squiggly line. So I, I'm not really sure. I don't, I'll have to play around with it one day and see if I can clean this up a little bit more, but I don't know a whole lot about the scope and I think I'm missing something that would clean this up but um, I do have my cursor turned on here so like if you click this button here you can turn on some horizontal cursors and then right here you can pick which channel you're wanting to do your measurements with so we're on four and I've got this Y1 at the peaks here and the voltage up here for Y1 is 1.87. So <clears throat> if our voltage scaling is correct, that is about 187 PSI. So, well, let's remember that. And I'm going to actually get the laptop out, the Pico scope out, hook everything up to it, redo the same capture again, um, and see what the pico scope shows on this pressure transducer i think our relative compression and our pulse sensor both of those are going to look pretty much spot on the same um, as well as of course our trigger but it it may just not be happy about that transducer so it, it's going to be something i have to play around with one day when i've got some time I got to thinking um, on the Phoenix scope here, there's one real major difference between this scope and the Pico scope. And it is the BNC grounds. Uh, these are all grounded together. So I think that noise in the signal could have actually been generated from my power supply my charger being hooked up to the battery so i might have been inducing some noise in the ground side and that could have been throwing off my uh, transducer so one day i'll try this again with uh, only one channel hooked up uh, to the transducer and that be the only thing hooked up to it and i'll see if that makes a difference with it or not but anyways 
got the Pico scope out. Let's uh, go on the software here and we will set it up how I need to. So channel one, of course, we need to change this to AC coupling mode. Okay, and you've seen that voltage drop. <clears throat> so if I turn this back to DC, you can see we're at 13 volts probably because that's what my charger should be set on. Yeah, 13.8. So when we change this to AC mode, it is now looking for voltage change, basically. Um, it, may, it basically makes the voltage signal act like a pulse sensor, how a pulse sensor is looking at change and pressure to generate a voltage. This is basically kind of the same concept here that we're, we're going off of. So that's our channel one. We'll move it up here out of the way. Um, I think probably a, a two volt scale. I don't, I don't remember what my scales were on the other one. Um, we, can, we can start out at five. Again, it's a scope. Sometimes you gotta play with these values and get them how you want. Uh, channel two is our sink. I'm fine with 20 volts. I don't really care. We're gonna move that down here out of the way. Oh. Get my laptop where I can work with it here. So we'll move that out of the way and then channel C or three uh, we'll do the five volt scale with it. That's going to be our intake pulse. And then D, well, that's where we get to change our probe setting to a uh, WPS 500. And yeah, we're on the 500 range. Um, but we know that it's not going to use all 500, so we can change the scale down to. Uh, the uh, 200 volt scale or the 200 psi scale and i still have a lot of noise in that thing so it might actually be my transducer let me turn my transducer off and back on see if that noise goes away because yeah that's uh that's no good right there either because let's uh let's give ourselves some time base let's get about one second on there. See, there's a ton of noise in that still. So, so maybe it wasn't the Phoenix scope at all. Maybe it's something to do with my transducer. Oh man, always something. So, either way, let's just take this thing. We're gonna just turn it off, and then we'll. Uh, Turn it back on, let it redo its calibration that it does. Let's see uh, what kind of signal we got now. Yeah, flatline. So maybe it was um, bad, bad setup anyway from that. Maybe it had nothing to do with the Phoenix scope or the charger. That's why you gotta do, you gotta know your tools, have multiple tools, and be able to test your tools. So let's let this get to the next screen, and we'll start it. Oh, look at that, Mo! It went back to that. Well, I don't like that. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe my Battery's getting weak in it or something. Start off fine. Hmm. Let me mess with this transducer. Well, I really don't know what's going on with my transducer. I uh, ended up unhooking everything except the transducer and it works perfectly fine. There is some noise, but I'm not too concerned about this little strike of noise here and there. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but either way, this is cylinder number one. So let's zoom in here. 
we do have an exhaust plateau a little bit of a pocket here and we do have a tiny amount of vacuum but not a whole lot so I think I think the better thing to do is either somehow plug up the intake tube some more to where we create more vacuum in the intake or hook everything up and let it crank and run and get a running compression. I do have a, um, a intake bladder that'll seal off the intake some, so I might I might do that first, just unhook the intake tube and put the bladder in there and uh, see how that works. So I've got my little intake bladder here, so we're just going to stick this down in the tube and uh, we'll pump this sucker up and get it to uh, seal off and then it'll have to breathe through this and if that's still too much air then I'll plug that off as well. So there we go. That's in there. Not worried about it being too too tight. Can't go very far. All right. So let's wait for the Pico to go to the next page. get a little bit better vacuum there that that'll be enough to uh, to compare from one cylinder to the other so let's pick out a little section here so yeah now you can definitely see that we've got a vacuum pocket so let's put our cursors on here um, where's my cursors rulers phase rulers you can see that little bit of noise right there I'm not sure if that's by just bleeding through uh, one of my my uh, cables that are run like close to it or something maybe I'm not real sure but let's get this lined up on the top here. All right, so I've got kind of my cursor set up. Right here we've got uh, the exhaust valve opening. And that's about at 135 degrees from our peak compression. And then exhaust valve closing is a little after 360. It's at 366. And that's when we start pulling our our intake vacuum now that intake vacuum could have started before this because I mean you're gonna have a little bit of overlap but since the exhaust valve is still open the vacuum is not going to be there because we still got atmosphere so we probably have some some valve overlap here um, it's just that exhaust valve is timed to where it is giving some uh, EGR effect right now um, and then we've got intake valve closing we'll call it about about right there about 228 degrees so I'm gonna write this stuff down so I don't forget and we'll do all this whole thing again in cylinder two and compare the two just took this plug out, this is number two, and it is wet. Wet, wet. It doesn't feel slick like oil. Definitely smells a little gas-like, but I can't hardly smell anything. But that plug tip was definitely wet. So, and that was number two. So, I think we're gonna end up finding that this is low compression. We just need to know where the compression is going. Also, when I was writing these numbers down, I, I told you guys wrong. I said 228 for intake closing. 
that's the delta from two to one. One is my ruler, so 595 degrees is intake closing. And my compression is a little off from what I thought it would be with the, uh, when I was using the Phoenix. Uh, it says 133 PSI right there. Um, not sure if maybe some of these others, 178 or 170-ish. So I don't know. My voltage might have been a little questionable on that. But it's something I'll have to play around with one day. <clears throat> so let's... uh start the scope we'll get some cylinder number twos going you can see that compression did taper off a lot let's go back to this first page it kind of start off about i mean it's low our peak was about 120 something here. Yeah, 125. And then tapered down and we kept tapering down just a little bit. So let's get another ruler down here. So not even 100 PSI, like right at 99 PSI. Let's uh, get in on one of these see uh what's going on here i think we're going to have a valve sealing issue maybe i think i wrote my uh, exhaust valve opening wrong i wrote down 135 but that is i don't know if that's correct that'd been way over here so <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not sure if that's correct. I need to, I have to go back and watch my video again and see if I wrote that down right. I wrote down 135. I don't think that's right because this one, the closing is still the same. 165, 166, or not 160, 366. So it's the same as cylinder one. So I need to look at my video again and clarify that right there. And then intake closing, I have wrote down 595, which is going to be close. I got maybe like 605 here, about 10 degrees different. Um, that could be, you know, maybe we might be dealing with a top valve issue i don't know if this thing has adjustable valves in it mm. we definitely got lower compression slightly different numbers but nothing drastic i'm gonna write down 603 for my intake closing <clears throat> and I'm gonna watch my last clip real fast and see what my exhaust valve opening degrees was reviewing my clip and yeah 135 so there is a difference in my exhaust opening it's very strange uh, hmm. I'm going to get my bore scope out. I just want to get a good visual in the cylinders. I want to be able to look at the valves. I'm going to roll, probably roll the motor over by hand to where the valves are closed. Get a good look at them. And uh, see if we can just spot anything weird looking. Just pulled number three plug out. And, um, yeah, it is wet, too. Come on, focus here. 
that whole electrode is just soaked. So I'm taking all the plugs out so I can get in there with a borescope and I just want to look in every cylinder, see if there's anything strange. But so far the plugs are definitely strange. These are new plugs. They're Bosch Iridiums, double iridium. Um, <clears throat> but here is cylinder number one. You can see it is black, sooty looking. And this one is clean. So definitely something going on here. All right, here we are in cylinder number four and we're on the compression stroke and we got all the valves are closed. We do see on the exhaust valves some carbon kind of flaking off of them and stuff, but nothing really screaming like an issue in number four. Let's flip it around. We'll get a better look at the intakes and cylinder walls. You see we got some scoring, but they don't look like they're actually like through the hashing. So it looks like normal wear and nothing really going on with these intake valves either. They that one is a little damp looking. Could be in from fuel or something. Not real sure, but that cylinder looks pretty good. Um <clears throat> that was on a compression. Uh number one I would think should be on exhaust stroke, I think. See that piston looks fine. Normal cylinder wear. Yep. Yeah. Let's look at these valves. So intakes are closed. Yeah. Exhaust are open, like I thought. Let's see. One thing I like about this camera is like you can kind of get into some weird places if you got patience and can uh, spend some time with it. I'm trying to get it to where it'll go into that chamber just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Just wanting to see that contact surface. It's, <clears throat> it's starting to get pretty pitted up. Um, so, it's typical with age. Exhaust valves get pitted up pretty bad. But we've got, we've got good contact surface on both of them. You can kind of tell a little bit. They, they got a good mating surface there. So that means our cylinders two and three are gonna be at top dead center pretty close. And that has a lot of moisture in here. Let's see. And that va those valves are soaked. So we're on exhaust stroke, I think. Is that the exhaust valve or intake valve? Kind of hard to see, kind of hard to tell. I think those are intake valves that are open. <clears throat> but I need, I need those valves closed and at the piston at bottom dead center so I can really get my camera in there good see what's going on cylinder three you can see this cylinder's washed as well like a ton of fuel have been in this because the carbon's worn off you can kind of see it around the uh, edge of the piston there also like are we dealing with like cylinder wash issue look at that that's coolant. That is coolant. That is red. This thing got red coolant in it? Wow. This is cylinder number three. 
Maybe we're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe our compression is head gasket. Because that definitely looks red. Let's see. Uh, oh, man. Did you hear that? I don't, I don't have you in frame, but did you hear the pressure off of this? Huh. Let's see. Yeah, we got red coolant. I think we're dealing with a head gasket. Wow. Well, um, maybe we can... I don't, I don't know if I've got an attachment to be able to uh, check compression leaking into this or not. But I'm starting to think we've got cylinders two and three. Head gasket is blown. And we might be losing our compression into uh, the coolant system. Well, that's a strange turn of events. Not what I expected. But, I mean, what's Bernie Thompson say? Follow the data? Follow the data. That looks like coolant in the number three chamber. I might even pressurize this cooling system and see if we can see it weeping through the head gasket. Well, I didn't get it on here. Let me get this to record too. But I, when I, I started pressurizing it <clears throat> and I did see a little bit around the edge. Let me try to get this to where I can show you again. But I've got more than one issue here. I, I know I do. I mean, you can see this, this is clearly coolant down the cylinder wall. Okay. And you can just see how soaked the whole chamber is up there with the valves and everything but I did have a spot where I'd seen some coolant starting to bubble somewhere right in here and it quit like I only seen it for just a second I haven't seen it drip or anything but that's that's definitely coolant. Look, you can, oh, there's a, is that running? Is it running down right there? Let's see. Where where was that run at? Right here. It might be actively like streaming down just a little bit right there. You can kind of see that little trace right there. So I, I think this is constantly streaming down just a little bit. But <clears throat> I couldn't get a whole lot of pressure in the system because we've actually got a leak right down in here. I know you're not going to, it's not going to focus too well, but there's coolant squirting out down there. You, I can hear it. So, let me squeeze a little more on here. So, I'm, I'm quite possibly even getting below the cylinder head level if I'm leaking down there. But, let me stick the mic down here. I'm sure you'll just barely be able to hear that. But I can hear it. I can see coolant puddling up down there. I can see coolant puddling up in the cylinder. I think number three is probably the worst one. Let's uh, look in cylinder two just to see if it's puddling up also. Um, you can see the droplets down the wall. Let me set you down where I can work my camera. Let's 
It's definitely puddled on the wall, that's for sure. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, we've got a stream going right there. Yeah. This car has a blown head gasket for sure. Wow. It's crazy. I don't know that I've seen one this bad, but look at that. That's nuts. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is that nuts or what? It's definitely crazy. Um, I'm going to put the plugs back in this thing. I, I've never had good luck with doing a pulse sensor on a radiator. I've just not. But this one might be bad enough to where we I might actually get it to show up on this thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spin it over and squirt some of that out of there so I don't hydro lock this thing. But then I'm gonna put the plugs back in there and we'll spin this thing over, get it to build up some pressure in this, and hopefully see it in a pulse sensor. All right, so we got the got the pulse sensor hooked up to the radiator cap with my little pressure adapter here. Still got um, cylinder one sink. I mean, we know we're looking at two and three, but I just want to use it for repetitiveness. Still have my battery voltage here, so we can get the relative compression in the same capture and. I'm gonna hook my Pico scope stuff back up and we'll uh, get some captures. All right, so I got the Pico scope set back up. Um, I may have to mess with the scale on the pulse sensor. I'm not real sure, but basically still the same setup of doing channel one is a relative compression. Channel two is my sync with cylinder one. And three is the pulse sensor, which is now on the radiator. So, and I'm gonna be pressing the throttle all the way down. I want as much air getting into that intake to get as strong and as much compression as we can uh, to hopefully get as much leakage into the, the uh, cooling system as we can. So wait till this next page. Oh, oh yeah. That is cool. That's a good one. That is, that is awesome. That's a good capture. That is a cool capture. Let's, let's put a filter on this to clean this, this up just a little bit. But boy, that is a cool capture. Let's uh, filter this one too. Come on. Active. There we go. Not too worried about this one, but we'll throw a filter on it too. It doesn't really need one, but that is an awesome capture. So let's zoom in. We'll get a, a couple rotations here. So cylinder one, okay, compression stroke, all right. Cylinder three compression stroke and then pulse sensor goes up. Cylinder four compression, cylinder two compression and then pulse sensor goes up. And then these are probably also gonna be um, due to that, those cylinders moving up and down also. That, that's a, a cool capture that that's probably one of my favorite captures I've ever got. That is awesome. So, bad head gasket on this thing, causing low compression and misfire. That's awesome. So, bore scope. Get yourself a good bore scope. Man, I find so many things with a bore scope. I love that thing. Tess Long, help, help me out, man, because... 
I, I use your product a lot. I love it. Uh, I need more of your product. So test along. If you see this video or if you know somebody at test along, link them this video. Tell them Jake needs some test long stuff. I'm, I'm tired of buying it because <laughs> I buy too much of it. I've got two or three of their, of their bore scopes. Uh, excellent product. Get, get yourself one. If you don't have a test long bore scope, uh, they're, they're phenomenal. And man, that's a cool car. But this is at the point where I put the car back together and give it back to the customer and tell them what's wrong with it. And, and I'm done with it. I do not want to be the guy tearing this thing apart to put a head gasket on it. I don't. <clears throat> but that's the proof right there. This thing's got blown head gasket on cylinders two and three. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, as much as I'm now enjoying this. Uh, that capture, I, I really love it. But thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already. And uh, we'll see you guys later.